Hello world, hello internet, it's me again here today to talk to you about a very very special play called DNA by Dennis Kelly. Uh, we're currently studying this as part of our page to stage exam which is something that all of our year 11s do uh, and our year 10s are just beginning to start looking at some of the themes and issues within the play and they're doing a bit of exploratory work to try and um, get into the heads and the minds of the characters. So there's going to be a couple of videos, um, a couple of them are on uh, Stanislavski and the Stanislavski and techniques that we've used to try and approach some of the characters characters. Uh, also looking at things like semiotics and how we build a scene in performance. Uh, however today this, this video is really just about looking at the themes and the initial kind of responses that we've had towards the play in these kind of uh, opening you know, introductory lessons uh, I've been doing. Um, so DNA then, it's um, a not particularly long play that uh, centres around a group of teenagers who are all in their final year of GCSE, so they're all around 16 years old. And in this kind of ragtag bunch of kind of mob of, of, of school children, um, there are some characters who are clearly powerful, who kind of exert a lot of um, influence and power within the group, um, specifically uh, one character called Phil, who is the kind of leader, I guess, who is the kind of one that everyone's scared of the most. Um, but then there are also lots of other characters uh, that have a lo much lower status, they're sort of followers rather than leaders, so characters like um, Brian, um, to um, um, Kathy. Kathy is another really good example of a character who just kind of does what they're told. Uh, and then really that kind of brings me to one of the first themes that I want to talk about here today, um, this idea of like power relationships. So within every scene that we've been looking at initially, what we've been trying to do is we've been looking at who is high status, who is calling the shots, who's dictating the action and who is basically just following uh, and that's been quite an interesting way of like looking at some of the different themes and issues certainly a good way of looking at who obviously is in a position of power and who's not um, also it's one of the things that I've been thinking about quite a lot is this idea of responsibility like if the, the question is posed within the play like who is responsible for the death of uh, Adam um, and it would appear in the first kind of instance, everyone's responsible. It's kind of like a game that gets out of hand and it becomes very quickly like a very, very severe kind of bullying situation. And, um, you know, on a couple of occasions, you know, the characters, when they're retelling this, the characters actually laugh like it's just some big joke. So they obviously don't, or at the time when they were doing it, they didn't really see that it was as big a deal as it actually was. Um, but it was, you know, it was a big deal. Uh, who, who is responsible then? That's the question. Is it a group responsibility that they have to take on? Um, if so, should they all be held responsible for their actions? Or is it more like of an individual thing? Would they have done it if they hadn't have been led by specific characters like John Tate, like uh, Phil, uh, is another quite an important character within the play. Um, Bullying then. Bullying I think is quite a relevant and interesting topic to talk about with regards to this this book because it's something that I think a lot of kids can really relate to. Um, there are kids I'm sure within this school that other students are scared of. They physically don't want to be near them because they feel like they're really you know, physically and emotionally and psychologically intimidated by them. So I think that's quite an interesting vein to try and um, explore with the students. Um, I also think that uh, the title of the play, DNA, I think it has like a couple of meanings, like all kind of good titles of, um, of plays. Um, in the first instance, it's quite like a literal kind of uh, meaning in that um, the group try and blame the, uh, the, the crime, blame the murder essentially of, of Adam on somebody else who's not associated, associated with the group at all. And they do that through the planting of DNA evidence and that's very important for the kind of the plot because they essentially they get away with it because they plant this DNA evidence but I think it's got like a deeper meaning than that um, I think that it refers to well as we know DNA is like the, the building blocks of life and so there are a couple of occasions within the play especially Leah as a character she mentions um, sort of how DNA is important kind of building block of, of, of life really she speaks about the difference between here it is. Um, she speaks about the difference between bonobos and chimps, and she says how chimps are really evil, um, nasty kind of characters who um, bully and use violence a lot within their, their chimp society, whereas bonobos use empathy and a lot more understanding and kind. And she actually says at one point, um, I saw it on a programme, 
such sadness in those intelligent eyes. She's talking about bonobos. Empathy, that's what bonobos have. Amazing, really. I mean, exactly like chimps, but the tiniest change in their DNA. The woman was saying that if we discovered bonobos before chimps, our understanding of ourselves would be very different. And I think that's a really important point that she's raising there. This idea that it's like the tiniest little building block or the tiniest component of you will define a massive, massive characteristic of you. Like, are you violent? Are you, uh, are you kind? That's the bell. I've got to teach, man. Um, I'm going to be speaking to some students regarding this as well. We're going to montage all this information together and hopefully we'll come up with some good answers. See you later.